So this section is about temperature conversions, and temperature conversions are going to be different than what we've been studying with dimensional analysis. There are three major systems for measuring temperature. Fahrenheit, which is what we're familiar with. When they say it's going to be 74 degrees today, they mean 74 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the Celsius scale and the Kelvin scale. Um, so we need to learn how to use the Celsius and the Kelvin scales because those are used in science. Here's the relationship between these different scales. So let's start with Fahrenheit because that's what we're familiar with. Um, we're going to look at the boiling point of water and the freezing point of water. So the freezing point of water on the Fahrenheit scale is 32 degrees Fahrenheit and the boiling point is 212. And these numbers are typical of English units they're just kind of seemingly random numbers. The Celsius scale is based on um, the boiling point and freezing point of water, and they decided to just make a new uh, scale, and so they said, well, the freezing point of water is going to be zero, and the boiling point is going to be 100 degrees, and then this is a metric unit, and so we're going to divide it into 100 degrees. And so it's based on hundreds and not on strange numbers. The Kelvin scale we will use when we talk about gases. The Kelvin scale is based on the idea of absolute zero. That there is a temperature, a, an absolute lowest temperature that you cannot get below that temperature. That's zero. And everything's based off of that. The, the size of the degrees or the size of the divisions is the same as the Celsius degrees. So the freezing point of water is at 273 Kelvin. The boiling point of water is at 373 Kelvin. The difference here is 100, just like on the Celsius scale. The difference is 100. To convert between temperature scales, we need equations. We can't do conversion factors. We need algebra equations. And so these are the equations. I will give these to you on um, a page of useful information for the exam. You do not need to memorize these equations. I just want you to be able to use them. So these are the, the relationships. So if you want to find the temperature in Kelvin and you have the temperature in Celsius, you add 273. If you have Celsius in I'm sorry, if you have Kelvin and you want Celsius, you take the Kelvin and you subtract 273. Those conversions are pretty easy. We're just adding or subtracting 273. The, the conversion between Celsius and Fahrenheit is a little more complicated because the degrees are not the same size. And so these are the equations, and we're going to do some examples. So here's an example, a Canadian newspaper where they use Celsius predicts a high temperature of 34 degrees Celsius, what will the temperature be in degrees Fahrenheit? And you might want to know this so that you could dress appropriately, right? Because you're going to wear different clothes if it's going to be 105 or if it's going to be 10 degrees Fahrenheit. At least you should. So what are we given? We're given a temperature in degrees Celsius, and we're trying to find degrees Fahrenheit. We still need to identify what we have and what we're trying to find. So we have that the temperature in Celsius is 34 degrees Celsius. And we want to know the temperature in Fahrenheit. So what equation are we going to use? I'm blanking on the equations, and if I go back a slide, I lose what I just wrote down. Not that that would really be the end of the world. One point eight times times Celsius plus thirty-two. Okay, thank you. Just, I can figure it out, but I just don't feel like it. So we look up this equation. We just look it up. You don't have to memorize it. 
And then we're going to take the number that we're given and we're going to plug it in. So on that page, there were four different equations. How do you pick the right one? Well, what are we trying to find? Degrees Fahrenheit. So you want the one that says TF equals something. So now I'm just going to put that number in. So it's 1.8 times the temperature in Celsius plus 32. So on your calculator, 1.8 times 34 plus 32, 93.2. and the unit will be degrees Fahrenheit. Any questions? Yes? Would you ever have to go from Fahrenheit to Kelvin? You might. So you go to Celsius and then... Exactly. If, if they gave you a Fahrenheit temperature and asked you for a Kelvin temperature, could happen, you'll have to do two steps. You'll have to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius and then Celsius to Kelvin. It could happen. At the bottom there is the, is the rule of thumb for significant figures with temperatures. The temperature, um, the Fahrenheit Celsius conversion involves multiplication and addition or subtraction, and so it gets a little complicated with the significant figures. We can just cut to the chase and say, however many decimal places you had in your init initial temperature, just keep the same number in your final answer. So we would round this then because 34 degrees Celsius ends in the ones place. And so we're going to report this number to the ones place. A Kelvin, I'm sorry, a Celsius degree and a Fahrenheit degree are similar in size. One is almost twice as big, but it's not like a thousand times bigger. And so the uncertainty is going to end up in the same place. And so we're going to call this 93 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not going to grill you on that, but I just want you to know why I'm doing what I'll be doing. Convert 298 Kelvin to degrees Celsius. These are nice simple examples, so there's one number there. We've got Kelvin, they're asking us for Celsius. You go look up the equation. Celsius temperature equals the Kelvin temperature minus 273. So you take your Kelvin temperature, 298, and you plug it in there. You subtract 273, and you get 25 degrees Celsius. The initial number had uncertainty in the ones place, and our answer will also have uncertainty in the ones place. Any questions? Normal body temperature for a dog is approximately 102 degrees Fahrenheit. What is this equivalent to on the Kelvin temperature scale? So here is exactly that thing you were asking about. What if we have to go from Fahrenheit to Kelvin or the other way around? Well, there is some reasoning that you could do without doing any calculations. But I'm guessing most of you don't really want to do that. Although, you probably don't really want to do the calculations either. So 102 degrees Fahrenheit... Um, we need to convert that to Kelvin, but first we're going to have to take the degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius and then to Kelvin. This cannot be strung together though, this is two individual steps. Because you go look at the equations for the temperatures and there's nothing that relates Kelvin and Fahrenheit. So we'll have to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius and then we can use a different equation to go Celsius to Kelvin. So Fahrenheit to Celsius, the temperature in Celsius is going to be the temperature in Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 
So we've got 102 minus 32 over 1.8. Be careful on your calculator. Common mistake is if you enter 102 minus 32 divided by 1.8, you're going to end up with 102 minus 32 over 1.8. And that is not the same thing. So there's two ways to do it. You can either put the parentheses in on your calculator or 102 minus 32 and then press the equal sign. Tell your calculator, I want you to finish the subtraction before we do the division. Because your calculator understands order of operations and your calculator says, we're supposed to do the division first and then the subtraction. But there's parentheses involved here and your calculator can't see that. So be careful. Make sure that you can get the same answer. 102 minus 32. I'm going to press the equal sign. That's 70. And I'm going to divide by 1.8. So I get 38.88888888889. Trying to write with the eraser. That just never works, no matter how many times I try. 38.8 repeating, and that's degrees Celsius. I'm not going to round my number off yet because I'm not done. That's the Celsius temperature. Now we have to go to Kelvin. So the, the Kelvin temperature will equal the Celsius temperature plus 273. So we're going to take this 38. 0.8 repeating and add 273 plus 273 it's going to the is going to show me 311.8 repeating and I'm going to round that to the ones place because my initial temperature 102 degrees was to the ones place. So I'm going to call this 312 Kelvin. Then we go over to our choices. Oh good, there's it's there. 312 Kelvin. If you get an answer that is one of the choices, that does not mean that you did it correctly. If you get an answer that is not one of the choices, that does mean you did it wrong. But the choices, especially on, on the exams, are not random. The wrong, the wrong answers are not random. We know what mistakes students make. So we make those common mistakes and put those answers in. So just because you got one of the answers does not automatically mean you got it correct. Any questions about this one? I won't give you one like this on an exam, a two-step temperature one. I won't. But it's good. It illustrates the other two equations.